I predict in the future, people will look back on this segment and recognize it as the story that launched L.A. Meekly to stardom, and then, just as quickly, to stardom-induced heart attacks. <laughs> <laughs> like Orson Welles had. But after eating 4,000 hot dogs. That was the name of his sandwich, was stardom. Rosebud was a type of mayonnaise he had to <laughs> This one is about a local celebrity probably only still remembered at all because of Ed Wood, the amazing Criswell. Jeron? Jeron? J-E-R-O-N. It's alive. J-E-R-O-N. Jeron. Jello Jello Charles Criswell King. That was his name. Wait, wait, say it again. Not Jello. Jeron Charles Criswell King. Great name. He was born August 18th, 1907 in Princeton, Indiana into an extended family who ran a mortuary. (laughs) Right off the bat... (laughs) He was born an Edward character. I know. He was born into the lifestyle he was destined to live. <laughs> he spent so much time around the mortuary that as a kid, when his parents would fight, he would hide in the casket storage room, which is a trait he carried into adulthood because he claimed he would sleep inside of a coffin oh every night God. in his home. He was a very quiet oh, child and he, d- he didn't speak until he was four years old during a bad rainstorm and he said his first words, the rain will stop. This was his first prediction and just like most of them, it was wrong <laughs> but eventually kind of right i guess Again, in the <laughs> it, long it, run it did stop raining yeah. it's not raining right now so he's been proven right history will look back on him kindly and from then on he couldn't stop talking right. he would run around the hotel his parents ran which is called king house <laughs> talking and you blabbing no that's taken already he was talking and blabbing and trying to get attention from anyone who would give it to him speaking of middle child he was an extra he was an <laughs> extra, extra tra- <laughs> he was an extra who became the lead role <laughs> one day in town they were having an unveiling of a monument to the town's fallen soldiers and when they pulled the blanket off the statue to reveal it to everyone Criswell was standing there giving the Gettysburg address (laughs) (laughs) Foscall Foscall 170 years ago I I forgot Obama when he got to high school his uncle gave him a job writing for his newspaper the Daily Democrat where he got paid 25 cents to write a column but what would he write about well since he was little he would get these hunches about things that would happen and as he got older he started to realize that a lot Daily Plaza go ahead it's very weird that you say that. What? We're going to get to that. As he got older, he started to realize that a lot of these hunches would actually happen and he started getting more accurate at them. So he started keeping a private tally of his predictions and eventually he had enough go right that he felt pumped of comfortable comfortable he felt pumpernickel about it. <laughs> he felt comfortable going public yeah with his predictions wow, okay. so he decided to write predictions in the newspaper in a column called criswell predicts an accurate glimpse of the future it's actually so accurate the- <laughs> objectively true words you can bet future. by <laughs> he had a, a sports almanac <laughs> little did we know his real name was biff <laughs> biffwell <laughs> the amazing biffwell well some of the early predictions from these columns were pretty benign such as i predict that the good people of canada can expect stormy weather but some were a little more forward looking like that people will start carrying the cremated remains of their loved ones in glass earrings and rings and like you would wear them like okay. fashion like I'm wearing right now he was right oh my god Grandpa. but he also managed to predict that Russia and China will attempt to take over Asia in the name of communism whoa so he was kind of he, that's okay. the thing but my favorite of these early predictions I predict all dog owners will face a personal battle with their beloved dog not <laughs> <laughs> on a daily basis, really. <laughs> Nine Stop out of every it. 10 dogs feel they are being discriminated against and are classed as second-class citizens under the pedigree system. And therein lies the pattern with Criswell for his whole career. Something mundane that's inevitable, yeah. something interesting about the future, something that actually comes true, and then something about dogs running for Congress. <laughs> that was his style. One out of every four is kind of right. He's just like a vessel for a higher truth. Like, he can't <laughs> A he higher can't truth pick. that's lying. <laughs> <laughs> so after high school, he studied music music at the University of Cincinnati and after college was a teacher for a year in Jersey City but after that he came back to his hometown to work at the morgue and write predictions in his uncle's newspaper so eventually weird small town life wasn't enough for him so he moved to New York City to become an actor where he got the role of Dorian Gray in The Life and Loves of Dorian Gray which ran on Broadway in 1936 for a month <laughs> <laughs> then the depression hit and yeah. they had to you know, World War One. they had to Everyone's Dorian eating. Gray into bullets everyone's uh, eating socks <laughs> they had to eat the stages there was no room for Broadway <laughs> You heard of treading the boards. How about salting the boards? He then toured with the play, but once it came to LA, he decided to just stay here where he yep. met an old speakeasy dancer named Myrtle Stone Stone Siffer. What was her real name though? Well, her stage name is Halo Meadows and her she had a poodle named Buttercup and he decided to marry her. What happened between then and the year 1953, I don't know, but that year, 1953, he started doing local ads on KLAC for some snake oil pills called Criswell Family Vitamins. Snake but, oil? But 
but just, you know, these vitamins will make oh, you okay, yeah. take these pills and you'll be doing the 63. <laughs> Ask your kids. But one night he ran out of stuff to say during his infomercial, but he still had 15 minutes to kill. So he decided to do a few of his predictions on the air. Bold. And then the next day, a few people called into the studio to tell him that a few of those predictions came true and enough called in that it encouraged Criswell to buy airtime on Channel 13 KCOP to start his show, Criswell Predicts. The format of the show was it would start with the song Pomp and Circumstance. <laughs> And then the announcer, who would go on to be the announcer of Divorce Court, would introduce Criswell, and he'd have his blonde spit curl, and he was wearing a tuxedo with sequined lapels, and give an introduction along the lines of, we're all interested in the future, because that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. Love it. Then it would just be a long list of his predictions for half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Things like how someday we'll all drive cars with swimming pools in them, <laughs> and that one day the world will tilt off its axis, and when you pour a cup of coffee or glass of water, the rim will not level. Telephone coin boxes and vending machines will refuse to work. Jukeboxes will be mute. And then will come the time when garbage cans roll across the street for no apparent reason. (laughs) Because the Earth's off its axis. Everything's crooked. Sound science. He went to the University of Cincinnati, okay? Don't question him. That's infallible. He's infallible. The infallible, amazing Criswell. (laughs) But he also said things like, I predict education will be given through the television screen. No personal teachers, but there will be a warden on duty to see that 100% interest is sustained. Later, education memory pills will help give you all the education you can possibly use. So again, Ritalin. again, he's almost there. Yeah. Also, he said that the US and Russia will separately and jointly during the 1970s begin to set up space stations. Progress will be slow until the late 1970s when the discovery of anti-magnetic forces will free man from the laws of gravity and make space travel without rocket propulsion possible. Almost there. Almost Big there. Big step back. Yeah. <laughs> this show ran until 1961 and in that time he developed a nice level of fame for himself people recognized him around town when he'd walk around wearing pancake makeup all the time (laughs) he was often in the Hollywood Christmas Parade he'd often hang out at the Brown Derby or at Bordner's in Hollywood which is not far from his home at 6620 Selma Avenue that's where Edward goes there in Edward oh really yeah I'm sure he was hanging out with Edward there so he referred to himself as a modern day Nostradamus (laughs) he also made a lot of famous friends around town like Mae West really who made him her personal psychic and would sell him her old cars for $5. You could decorate those and you can get a lot of you get a lot, Yeah, you can make predictions on that car, you know. <laughs> I predict cars will be driving me. <laughs> Welcome to Woodruff's Hollywood. She even recorded a song about him, Mae West, it called Criswell Predicts. You're kidding. Yeah. No, I'm it. not. All these people, everyone I covered made songs. His best prediction about her was that she'd be elected president and that she, him, and Liberace's brother would all take a rocket to the moon. Whoa, okay. Those are all things that could happen. It could. I mean, once they discover for anti-gravity. Yeah, of course. He was also friends with Vampira. My love. But his most remembered friendship is that with Ed Wood. He agreed to be in Plan 9 from Outer Space as a favor, where he says the perfectly Criswell Ed Wood line at the beginning of future events such as these will affect us in the future. <laughs> <laughs> he was also in the Ed Wood movies Night of the Ghouls and Orgy of the Dead where he was drunk. Yeah. But even though he is mostly a celebrity, his fame did bleed a little bit nationally. His news columns got picked up in 150 papers across the country and Criswell Predicts was put on 85 TV stations. Whoa. He wrote a few books, Success Without Struggle, Criswell Predicts from now to the year 2000, Criswell Predicts Your Next 10 Years, and Criswell's Forbidden Predictions based on Nostradamus and the Tarot. In 1970, he released a record of his predictions called The Legendary Criswell Predicts Your Incredible Future. This, uh, one you, per- Greg Gonzalez. Yeah, I'm talking to you. It's like the E.T. ride. <laughs> Greg, Greg Gonzalez. Gonzalez. <laughs> So one prediction off that record said, I predict men and women will wear exactly the same makeup, the same style of hairdress, and if required, the same type of wig. I was not allowed to say on television, radio, or have it appear in my column as the advertisers would clomp down on me and clomp very heavily. This is a tweet he wrote recently? Before Twitter, you had records. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see what he put out? That wax cylinder he put out? He's got to delete those. He's got to delete those vinyls. He can't be president. He's not going to host the Oscars with that vinyl. So he was also on some legitimate TV shows. He was on the Merv Griffin show, the Mike Douglas show and both Jack Parr and Johnny Carson's really? Tonight Show. Here's where we get into his most accurate predictions. Okay. On the Parr show on March 10th, 1963, he said, I predict that President Kennedy will not run for re-election in 1964 because of something that will happen to him in November 1963. Wow. That thing was his assassination on November 22nd, 1963. But isn't that like election time is November anyway? So you could be like, he's not gonna be president anymore because he'd be voted out. 
No. 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 Don't, no, no. no. I don't, know, don't take this away from him. That, that's, that's a lot. That's weird. On Johnny Carson. Oh, his name's also Lee Harvey Oswald. We didn't say that about Chris <laughs> oh, Yeah, I forgot to say that. <laughs> but also, it was Lee Harvey Oswald's dog. He almost got <laughs> it. He almost got it. Actually, he was the second shooter. Oh, his best shooter. <laughs> On Johnny Carson's show on December 31st, 1965, he predicted Ronald Reagan, the actor, would be California's next governor. His third accurate prediction was that a leader of the Negro Civil Rights Movement will be killed before October 1968. Mm. Martin Luther King Jr. was killed April 1968. Whoa. But really, those were flukes. <laughs> he got so, yeah. very, I mean, specific flukes, but that's a fluke. Yeah. Let's get into just a list of my favorite of his okay. predictions. He said that between February 11th and May 11th, 1983, all the women in St. Louis would lose their hair, causing chaos leading to divorces and an outbreak of violence towards hairdressers. <laughs> like, I feel like if he stopped that women lose their hair, there would have been no. like just enough of a weird thing to happen. Uh -oh. But he's like, and then hairdressers and then who are they they're gonna, who's going to sign off on the union strikes? But to even be so specific as to give the dates of when yeah. this is going to happen. Yeah. He predicted Kansas would become the most important state in the United States. He predicted South Dakota would be the first state to legalize prostitution and marijuana. And he said that California will, will <laughs> the South Dakotans have been living high and <laughs> high and horny for too long. He also predicted that California will boom as no other state in our history has boomed. Angela note that for him, boom. He predicted that in October 1969, a famous white actor will be exposed for running a Pizzagate style slavery ring out of a basement in Beverly Hills. He said that in Chicago on January 10th, 1970, a, re a revival of the old fashioned dance marathon of the 1920s for contestants over 85 will be held sponsored by a vitamin company and he testing their new product. That's so specific. So, spe That's so specific. He, he thought it was on point. He's uh, desperately contacting all vitamin companies nah. in Chicago. <laughs> you um, got to sponsor this dance company. Here's what he said. The next movement will be the youth's rebellion through nudism. And this movement will begin in Rhode Island and spread throughout the land. I predict that perversion will flood the land beginning in 1970. I predict a series wow. of homosexual cities, okay. small, compact, carefully planned areas will soon be blatantly advertised and exist from coast to coast. These compact communities will put the olden Greeks and Romans to shame with their organized orgies. You will be able to find them near Boston, Des Moines, Columbus, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., San Francisco, St. Louis, New Orleans, Dallas, and Miami. We just outed all those secret gay clubs that don't need to be secret anymore. <laughs> Thanks, Criswell. <laughs> Perversion will parade shamelessly and this all will be within the law because the perverted will claim they have been discriminated against. He also predicted an aphrodisiacal era, you know, the time when you do the 53. Yep. Or the 63. The 53 no. is. Yeah, well, boy. <laughs> Consult your doctor about the 53. If you think you're doing a 53. If your 53 goes to a 63. <laughs> he predicted this era from May 1st, 1988 to March 30th, 1989, where the U.S. will be swept by the popular clouds of an aphrodisiacal fragrance. Oh. During this time, the sex Max body spray during, <laughs> this is when old spice was invented <laughs> during this time the sex urge will advance rapidly and many men will flagrantly expose themselves in public oh grandfathers will be accused of seducing their granddaughters and uncles will be jailed under similar crimes women will begin to think more of their appearance and they will have new hairstyles more attractive clothing this is a whole porn hub category <laughs> the criswell yeah the criswells and will use more cosmetics than ever before in los angeles california particularly hollywood would, sex acts will be performed openly, unashamedly on the streets. He's not wrong. Uh, many, Hollywood Boulevard, have you been there? Many cases of incest will be reported. I predict a wealthy San Francisco attorney will announce his marriage to his mother, and a Hollywood producer will openly declare his daughter is going to bear his child, and a young man in Arkansas will ask to be legally wed to his pet cat man's best wife. No. He also said birth control would be in our water supply and anyone who wanting to have a kid would have to apply for a pill from the government to become fertile. But a lot of I his wish. predictions... His, <laughs> I wish I was fertile. <laughs> a lot of his predictions focused on death. He said there'd be a graveyard built in Nevada in 1980 that could hold 60 million people. It's called... It's called the Reno. <laughs> he predicted Fidel Castro would be assassinated by a woman on August 9th, 1970. You look upon a woman. I can be assassinated by no, <laughs> no hombre. <laughs> no, senor. You look upon a senorita. A meteor would destroy... I wanted to stop you and I didn't know how. Uh, there's no stopping me. No man can stop no, me. <laughs> Let's go through the whole thing again. A meteor would destroy London on October 18th, 1988. He said Denver would be destroyed on June 9th, 1989 by a force from outer space. He described how a carnival there would be destroyed. A penny arcade will become a dungeon of doom. No! A canopy of that a... better, though. A canopy of a merry-go-round will plunge down upon its most innocent riders. The citizenry of this Colorado city will find themselves enveloped in a jelly-like substance that was 
wants brick, concrete, steel, and lumber. He said that from November 20... He's just describing the blob. He said that from November... Steve tw- McQueen will be there. <laughs> you mean Lightning McQueen from my stars... My <laughs> I stars li- live act star- Stars and cars getting car cars. <laughs> he said that from November 28th to December 24th, 1980, an outburst of cannibalism will destroy the city of Pittsburgh, where a smile will be unknown. He said the helpless state of Vermont will be destroyed by a nuclear missile on February 11th, 1911. I like the idea of him having a giant map in his home of the US, and in, from each state, there's a flag of doom. <laughs> They're going to eat each other. This one's going to sex themselves <laughs> to death. They're going to lose their hair. That's worse than death. <laughs> he said the entire planet will be be destroyed on August 18th, 1999 by a God, by wish. a black rainbow that will take away all of our oxygen. He claims his predictions are 86% accurate, but I think that's 95% wrong. <laughs> what he never saw coming was his career ending when people lost interest in psychics like him in the late 60s and his wife leaving him and selling his house without telling him. Didn't see that one coming. Uh, nope. He spent the last few years of his life in an apartment in Burbank Yeesh. until he died of a heart attack on October 4th, 1982 at the age Yeesh. of 75. He was cremated and is now at the Valhalla Memorial Park. His plaque says, as Criswell predicts. A lot of people see him as a fraud, but he insisted, I had the gift, but lost it when I started taking money for it, mm. which is a good encapsulation of what a local celebrity is, but if anyone wants me to lose whatever gifts I have, I'll gladly take money for it. 